when I first started playing drums, I always wanted to learn what I saw people doing. And when I sat down at the drums, I always would try to do these grooves and try to do what I heard. But one of the things that really just annoyed me was I couldn't figure out how they could get that uh, texture to their grooves. Like I knew the straight... I knew that, but there was something missing that I was hearing either in a recording or I would see a drummer do it live, and I couldn't quite figure out what they were doing um, until I realized it was actually ghost notes. It was ghost notes and texture that they were adding with the snare drum, and I then set out to try to figure out how exactly do you do that, and what I quickly realized is if you don't know rudiments and you don't work your hands into shape with rudiments and a solid open stroke roll, accomplishing ghost notes on the snare, snare drum is going to be very hard in a groove. So, because what you end up doing is end up being sloppy and you end up being very sloppy when instead you want a very tight. practice that, you really have to get your hands down. You have to get your hands uh, almost perfect with an open stroke roll. And what I mean by that is right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left. And uh, when you get the open stroke roll down, you can combine it with different uh, rudiments and whatnot, and really just work your hands into shape with the rudiments. And and you'll be able to add those ghost notes to the snare drum in a groove. Um, one of the ways that I have practiced adding ghost notes, because when you think about a groove in a linear pattern, think of it as a groove is just four measures of straight 16th notes. It's just a matter of it's between different, um, different parts of the drum set. So if you have 16th notes, one, two, three, four, five, Now and try to add a couple of those 16th notes to the snare drum along with the backbeat. One of the ways that I've done to help me work that up to speed is uh, actually do all of the 16th notes with my left hand just to get my left hand comfortable uh, moving more than just the backbeat. So if we slow it down. hand is playing all of the notes in that linear groove and then when you go into uh, deciding to do ghost notes you simply just take out select notes in that linear groove of the left hand so uh, I'll try to explain that better by actually doing it keeping that linear thought in my head, but I'm just not playing some of the notes except a couple of the strategic ones. Um, one of the things I found is really nice to add to a groove is on the backbeat, add the 16th note directly after it. See what I mean? It's almost like a natural reverb that you're making, um, except when you do it tight and you do it uh, uh, in the pocket, it kind of adds a really cool effect. Especially when you're kind of shuffling the groove, it adds a good effect. Um, another way that you can uh, work on your ghost notes is get, like, say, a rudiment like the paradiddle, you can, which is right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. You can actually use that between the hi hat and the snare drum and create a groove out of it. So right. <laughs> Most of the ghost 
most notes that I throw into a groove are going to be of the paradiddle family, whether it's singles, doubles, paradiddle, diddles, whatever. Um, you kind of add those together, but you mix them all up together. Um, but really, it's almost as if your left hand's the only one playing those, because my right hand usually is just keeping a straight groove, keeping a straight beat on the uh, the hi hat, and so the left hand is really, you know, in my head thinking I'm doing all these other different paradiddles along with it. Um, let me give you an example. So if it was single paradiddles, but you're kind of um, mixing it all up. difficult to explain, but keeping the paradiddle family in your head uh, while you're doing ghost notes, but keeping that backbeat. Um, you don't want the ghost notes to um, end up hindering you from a backbeat. Um, I'll give you a few examples of ones that I like to do. So really, the simple groove without the ghost notes is... with the ghost notes. And now notice, I'm, I'm even adding a little bit more than just the 16th note um, string instead of the linear pattern of 16th notes. I'm adding a 32nd note drag going into new phrases or even into uh, a new measure. So uh, notice I'll play the groove. That little drag going into the snare drum, into the bass drum, just adds another extra little bit of uh, texture to it. And uh, really making sure that backbeat is strong, you can add all the ghost notes. As long as it's in time, it adds a great texture to a groove. Um, another one that I like to do is um, just the groove, instead of just the normal 2-4 um, backbeat, it's actually... Um, you just add a, a couple more of the backbeats, but you can add the ghost notes to it. So, so it's just it's something that you can add to it, take it or leave it. Um, when you get it down to the simplest form, it's really making sure that your hands are in shape, and you can do an open stroke roll freely, and you have control between your right and your left hand. Um, and also, kind of splitting your body into four pieces, you've got to have the independence from your hands and your feet. So that, when you're doing the, um, the grooves, your left hand isn't hindered by what your left foot's doing, or your left hand isn't hindered by what your right foot's doing, or by what your right hand is doing. Because when you can actually get the independence between all four limbs, you're able to um, have more freedom on the kit and add more texture, but staying in time and in the pocket. So um, I'll finish out with just an example of a couple different grooves that have some um, ghost notes to them. So I hope you enjoy this. <laughs>